Hi everyone, I'm so excited to bring you this participant session. It's a little bit older than some of the participant sessions I've been sharing lately, but it's just as valuable and just as amazing. This session is full of tons of love and wisdom from Vagrian and such an array of amazing questions. Some of the topics in this session include seeing a flying saucer, ayahuasca, working in the nighttime in your non-physical self, why someone might be connected to being a musician, finance, cryptocurrency, and so, so much more. So I'm excited for you to dive right into this amazing participant session. Okay. I've had a, a, a number of, I would say, impossible things happen to me in this life, as impossible as it is to exist in this miracle of life. But one of the unusual things that happened one of my teen years was seeing this gigantic flying craft over my head as it was jogging. Yes. And I was looking around to see if anyone else saw it. <clears throat> it was fairly big, as big as a football field, I would say. Yes. And then it just up and disappeared. But uh, you know, it was kind of a, a landmark event at the time. And so I've had unusual events like that happen to me. So I'm kind of curious here I am in my latter stages of life. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna, gonna go, but am I due for more unusual things like that? We would like forced to address the statement that you said about not knowing how much longer you would have. And the answer to that is you may choose and you will choose because it is not an external decision. Your end of life's occur when it is perfectly orchestrated by both you and the energy that is all that is, which is also the higher versions of you or the higher essence of yourself. And so you can, if you choose, have a proactive or intentional decision-making process on the longevity of your existence and the quality therein. Now, with regards to your experience as a younger version there is nothing impossible about what occurred to you even if those around you did not see it is not because it was not there it is because there are those of you on this planet which are in human bodies who have the ability and access to see more or not more but frequencies or access Let's say in the same way, an antenna may tune to 12 channels and another may tune to 108. You have access to other channels. What happens often with those of you who have access to other channels is you are convinced or you auto convince yourselves, often when you are young, often when you are children, that the access to those channels, or rather, that there is nothing interesting on those channels, or rather that those channels do not even exist. They do, they are active all the time around you in every frequency, we are an example of that. And your decision as to whether or not you will have more, shall we say contact with the energy that is yes, we will use the word extraterrestrial in the terms of extra as in out of and terrestrial earth, then you may have more contact. And if there's something that is desired by you, you can consciously cultivate those channels. You can consciously learn to turn your dial to those channels and invite that in. Often you do not, or those of you who have this ability do not for fear of what they may find on those channels. And we assure you that whether you turn into those channels or not, they are there. My next question is my uh, uh, recent experience, the last four years, I went to a few ayahuasca ceremonies in Colombia, Costa Rica, and it's definitely a different uh, religious form. I'm just wondering, like, how is that form going to evolve, I guess, in the next, as we collectively change? Is that particular form, religious form, going to change much? We would like to 
understand your definition of the word religion? Uh, celebration of life. Yes, that is not the traditional definition of the word religion. And we now understand the question more clearly. The experiences you had are actually a very good carry on from the previous question in that there are substances many on your planet that are here or that exist or that you have created into your reality as what we would call permission slips for those of you to tune your tuner or change the channel to access without having to believe that you are doing it on your own other channels and frequencies that are available to you you as human beings are bridges you are not 100 physical you are both physical and spiritual there are animals that are 100 physical yes they have souls or consciousness but they are not a bridge to non-physical in the same way that humans are humans have this ability and it is often overlooked because of the persistence of physical sensation. All of your physical sensations, the ability to even feel anything or perceive of anything at all is a spiritual experience. So the question about how will religion or religion in the term that you have described it will evolve on your planet is, and this is part of why we speak with you as well, is it is in our hopes for you or in our Yes, hopes that more and more of you will awaken to the fact that you are here to be joyful and that you are all united. These substances can and do often help with that bridging or that tuning to the channels that are unseen. And with every tuning to the channel of unseenness, you have more ability in your, quote, lucid or waking life or sober experience to do it on your own and we would like to ask if that is the case for you that since you've had these experiences you are more easy or more easily able to tune to say the frequencies of love and unity yes i would say and there are times when i guess the term is like flashback where i feel i'm having a uh, an all-encompassing experience from the past but it feels tinged with ayahuasca like energy. I don't know if my friends are in a ceremony at the time or I'm somehow accessing that kind of DMT in me and yes. moving forward that way. Well, we would ask you, since both are possible, to decide which feels better to you, which reality feels better. Does it feel better to believe that you need something external to access that state? Or does it feel better to believe that once you have accessed or opened that channel that you have a consistent ability to access it at will? Well, certainly uh, <laughs> when you see all the purging and everything else you go through, uh, it's nice to have the end result without that kind of a journey sometimes, but yes. I like the end result. <laughs> and the end result is always available to you, which is the blessing of having permission slips. Once you know that you can do something and you have had permission, yes, go ahead, do this thing, have this experience, it is safe or it is, you are able, then you know that you are safe and you are able. And there are far simpler ways to access DMT within your brain, if you would like to stay on a chemical sort of description, there are ways to access the natural potency of your pineal gland, which is producing at all times hormones that will bring you to states of higher consciousness. And there are ways to learn to alter your own consciousness, even with something as simple as your breath. Mm -hmm, of course. So all of this is permission for you. And we say that you have been blessed as well on the planet with what is now considered plant medicine or hallucinogens that will give you the 
doorway or the first experience or perhaps several that will then teach you that all of it is within you. It is not the substance that creates the experience. It is you. And the substance simply opens one small doorway for you to allow it. It is not that it is not there. It is that you are so skilled at not allowing it through. Because you would not function as a human if you were always allowing it through. Uh, I'd like to comment about some uh, <coughs> lucid dreams I've had. One in particular where I was wandering on a beach and this big parade was coming towards me. People were driving, parading, waving at me and uh, I'm walking towards them and it's summertime and the sun's setting and, and I know that it's winter time in, in physical life. And so I start coming awake in the dream hearing uh, or <clears throat> saying, oh, this is a dream, this is a dream. And at the tail end of the parade are these three guys carrying giant boulders. And I said, well, if this is a dream, you can throw these boulders up into the sun. So they threw the boulders up into the sun and I'm looking up into the sun and my eyes open in my bed in the dark in winter at three in the morning. So I had this transition of energy and I felt so good afterwards. So I'd certainly like to encourage more of that kind of energy. You may set your intention before sleeping to not only have lucid dreams, but to remember them because there are often times where you will have had experiences. This also ties to your relationship with the experience that you had as a younger version because it is in your sleep consciousness state that you do have the majority of your contact experiences. Do you ever wake up very tired? More recently during the past two years, I would say I get up, I do a few things, but then I had a morning nap, which I would usually leave my naps till later in the afternoon, but more recently, yes. This is because your consciousness is doing quite a bit of work at night. <laughs> and do not confuse this, what you are thinking is tiredness with your body getting older or you having less energy, it is not the case. It is in fact, because like you said, things are accelerating for you or this aspect of you that is non-physical is accelerating and therefore you are getting less sleep than you think you are actually getting. Okay, well, I'll go with that. That's what I'll tell my friends. <laughs> I regularly dream of this young lady I used to live with and uh, they're very harmonious, agreeable dreams, but uh, our relationship isn't like that so much in the, in, in the physical world. We're just kind of, you know, a distant friends, but we seem to be more connected in the dream world, which is kind of strange because she's the almost exact opposite of the way she is in this physical plane. So that's just an interesting <laughs> observation I have. Yes. I want to have that kind of relationship with someone in that realm and yet be kind of aloof here in this realm. It is because many of you and all of you are connected in that you are all simultaneously other versions of the same one, the same desire of all that is to individuate. And we have analogies of a tree, which seems to be quite digestible by your human mind in that a tree has a trunk and then limbs and then branches and then twigs and then leaves upon a twig. And it is possible that this being is a leaf upon the same twig as your twig. Therefore, you are in the same sun. You have the same amount of water arriving to you. The same bird perches on the same branch that shakes you in the same way. Mm. It does not mean that you will produce a fruit or have very much contact with each other, just that you are on the same soul group or soul family, there will be a connection and the dreams that you share with this person or the dreams that you have of this person are part of your soul contract with this person for you to come to questions such as the one that you have, come to questions such as who am I, who are they? Why do they display as human different than they do as energy? Why do I display as human different than I do? as energy. 
what would I choose for my future? What would I choose for the future of this relationship? How can I respect the free will of this being to be distant from me while still being in love with them? How can I respect my own needs and desires to have a deeper relationship with them without imposing them on that being? How do I respect my needs to feel the emotion around not having the relationship of my dreams in real life? There are many questions and often the people with whom you have the closest connections are not those with whom you share your life. The ones with whom you have the closest connections are the ones who push your buttons, the ones who challenge you into the questions that you need to resolve within yourself in this incarnation. And so you may begin to or continue to think of this person as a soulmate, as a very important energy within your life and understand also that they are your ally in this experience because of their resistance to have a close relationship with you in the waking physical, because they do force you to question, because having a harmonious relationship with someone is not nearly as fruitful for growth as having a conflictual one. Now, this also does not mean that there will be a happily ever after, but it does give you the opportunity to adjust your understanding of what relationship is, to adjust your understanding of what love is, and to adjust your understanding of how you are not at all separate from this being. Okay, well, just call me the adjuster. Yes, uh... and that is often the most painful news that we have to provide you as humans is that you are not here to have an easy time. You are here to have a wonderful and joyous time, yes. But this is only because you learn to shift your perspective to understand how wonderful and joyous it is that your relationship is what you termed out as aloof. That you can love unconditionally. You can love the aloofness. But it does not mean it is an easy journey because it is in the discomfort that you grow. Well, can't argue with that. <laughs> There's been lots of discomfort lately. So I guess my roots are going down deep. Yes. And when you feel discomfort, you may reframe it as upgrading. I've been working with music and uh, I just find it like really curious that uh, I really enjoy just playing on my own the clarinet here and the guitar and I really seem to use it as a kind of touchstone and uh yeah and on the one hand was going to ask yeah what do I have any branches of lifetimes where I was a working musician because there seem to be so many coincidental things in my life around music Yes, you do, in that you have every experience of humanity that has ever and will ever exist. And yes, you are closer to those experiences of musicians. Otherwise, you would not have a passion for music. There are countless beings on your planet who have no desire to play the clarinet or the guitar or the pianoforte. And they are not as connected to the consciousness, the collective consciousness of the language of music you are and therefore of course you have had and will have and do have experiences of what you are calling a working musician i uh, went for a long walk this week <clears throat> along the shore here by the lake and i had my mother's ashes in an urn and i uh, <clears throat> tossed them far away into the lake and then i got i just realized you know, as i was saying my final goodbyes that she was not a swimmer or a person that uh, liked water. And I just thought, oh my goodness. This is, I hope she has a sense of humor about this. Well, she does. And she's with you right now. And we assure you that she was mostly water. Continued or returned or her ashes. In fact, she is not in the ashes at all, nor in the urn. 
and does not care at all what happened to that amount of matter. In fact, it is humorous, yes, that you still care. Hmm. This we are transmitting from her in that the action of saying goodbye and then the fear of a young boy to make sure that they did the right thing by their mother shows how much you loved her. And that is worth far more than any disbursement of the carbon that once was. I've been around a lot of people that were suicidal. In fact, once I was just coming down on the subway and somebody jumped in front of the train in front of me and I had an unusual psychic experience at that time. I'm just wondering, like, why has this been around me this lifetime? Like, so close. Friends of mine that had tried numerous times. In your theme, to have this experience, again, to ask these questions, we would ask you to reflect upon your... <laughs> ideas or beliefs upon ownership of one's own life, upon the energies that people arrive at, which make them feel trapped within their human experience and understand how or why you have been presented with this storyline, because it is simply there for you to transmute or to alchemize perhaps not only for yourself, but for others. Often when there is a theme in someone's life, it is pointing them towards a direction of service. You may find yourself, as you release resistance to this theme, becoming a very valuable asset to people who are in the pain that is required for them to consider to end their lives. And with your experience of having been around people who either have or who have considered that and what wisdom you have learned from them or perhaps have absorbed from them, including the pain, you will be able to help that one person who you have come into soul contract for, with, and perhaps you already have in that there is possibility that you have smiled at the right stranger in the right moment, and they have decided not to jump in front of the train. You have a level of compassion and understanding of the pain that humans put themselves in that others perhaps do not. And unfortunately or fortunately, the topic or the theme of suicide is something that you as humans are all often experiencing in some way or another. It would be hard to find someone who that topic or theme did not touch at some point. But if there is a recurring theme in your life, any recurring theme, not just this, it is asking you to look at where you can be of service in that theme. Does this mm. feel like something that could be helpful to you in that does it feel like perhaps there is some service to be given from having had these experiences well i certainly would love the occasion of helping somebody continue their life and to encourage them to enjoy life more uh, i wouldn't turn away from that <clears throat> although i don't know if i <laughs> could be a, a, a formal therapist type, but I certainly am an informal, uh, helpful person, I'm sure, <clears throat> I would say. There are many occasions to volunteer, simply your time or listening or compassion that perhaps are not what seems to be urgent in that we do not think that you will be standing at a apartment building window and talking someone off a ledge, but often it is very subtle. The small 
moments that lead someone to feeling alone in the world and feeling like they have no way out. For example, you may see a senior gentleman sitting on a bench alone in a park. And as you walk past, catch his eye and in it notice that there's a glimmer of hope for connection or conversation. And you may stop for five minutes and talk about the weather and what a lovely day it is. And that may give this person another day's will to live. Mm -hmm. Or a young man who does not have perhaps the best luck, who is on the street, who has made some bad choices, may benefit from your generosity of listening to a story or listening to him play the music and throwing some quarters in his cap. You do not know what your small acts of kindness do, but we do believe that if you have had lots of experience with those who are at their chosen end of lives, that there are angel aspects to your being that can be of support to others. One of my uh, concerns lately is I've had some really good success in the last few years. Um, I've never been a financial person, but I immersed myself in it a few years back and did really well with the recent developing sector known as cryptocurrency. And uh, just having had a recent downturn, kind of changed things around dramatically. So I, I kind of wonder about the future of, you know, I really got a lot out of, the, out of the chapter in the book on abundance and money. But yet I was thinking in my immersion in cryptocurrency that this was the beginning of the changing landscape of finance and uh, uh, that may or not be so I'm just kind of wondering should I keep my toes in that water can you comment on that at all <clears throat> yes but you will not like our answer in that there is no concrete answer at this moment in time. You are witnessing what is the dissolvement of old structures and systems. And there is no telling as to the timing of that dissolution because it is a collective choice that you are making moment to moment. You are choosing each now, each future now, as a collective, including the what you are calling financial systems. This is why you are seeing something that had the potential of becoming something new or new agreements, becoming suddenly or not suddenly, but adopting similar instability as the older systems because the collective has now embraced it as part of the established systems. It is no longer new and you are no longer setting intention for it to be separate from what is old. So you are still in a space of emergence and of, yes, dissolving, that will take time and it is unpredictable. The only thing that you can predict is your state of being with regards to it. If you are experiencing fear or if you are experiencing anxiety with regards to your finance, we can assure you that you will not have a beneficial financial outcome. Unfortunately, that is the case because it would be what you are calling in. If, however, you are seeing your, what you called earlier, success, which is a hint that you are not seeing it in this way, but if you are seeing your success as a game that you are playing simply for the joy of playing it, then you will have absolute, at that point, yes, the word success is correct because what you would be trying to achieve would be the joy. So finance or trade at the moment is a bit of a rodeo in that there is no way to predict what is happening in that you as humans are in a state of absolute confusion in this now moment. And that is okay because it is perfection. However, there is no financial security. So best thing to do is to become secure with the insecurity that you must have at this time because everything that is in terms of this topic will soon be not. Well, that's something to chew on. <laughs> it is. And 
when we say what we have just said, that it will soon be not, it does not mean that you will, quote, lose your well-being or lose your material possessions or lose your state of safety or lose your ability to have a healthy life. It is simply that this particular Structure. game that you have been playing, which, hmm. yes, we can even use the word of monopoly, is coming to an end. Someone is about to realize that it is cards and plastic houses and a board and that it actually is not that entertaining at all. Well, it's definitely been a rodeo. That's the best word I've heard to describe my experience, that's for sure. Yes, and people go to the rodeo and they enjoy it very much. And they ride the bull and they get thrown off and they get back up because they are there for the thrill of it. And that is how we encourage you and all of you to experience your, let's say, financial adventure at this time. We have had such a lovely conversation with you and have had such a pleasant interaction. We hope that you have had your questions answered not only in our verbal interaction, but also energetically and can feel the transmissions that are between the words. We wish you the light and the love of a thousand suns. Anainai. I hope you enjoyed that persistent session as much as I enjoyed editing it. And please make sure to leave comments about what touched you, what was interesting for you and anything else that comes to mind. I'd also love it and really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to this channel and in return, you're going to get many more videos like this. And do check out my website so that you can get your two free chapters to the Vagrian book, Seeking Ends When Sharing Begins, and maybe participate in one of our upcoming events. I'd love to see you there. Take care.